Today we're going to be uh, carving our whittle project and uh, it's actually a sneak peek of a full length video that you can watch by subscribing to my wood carving school, which is uh, scrolling as I talk right now, all the available projects, but I digress. This video is kind of little segments of kind of important key moments in the full length video. So it will hopefully give you a good impression of how to approach the project and sort of give you a smattering of wood carving tips. I hope you enjoy this plethora of provocative programming. Before you go on thinking, oh, Al just wants to promote his little wood carving school and these little things is, a, well, it's true. But I hope you enjoyed the video anyway, because there's some good content to be had here. So let's get into it. All right, now, of course, per usual, we have uh, a piece of basswood here. This is a one by one by five inch piece of bass, and uh, this is kind of a pretty standard length that you can find on Amazon uh, and other websites. In fact, I'll link it in the YouTube description. So the first thing I want to do, measure about an inch from the top here. And uh, I can carry that line over to the other side here. All right, and at this point, I'm going to uh, make a stop cut. And uh, that's going to look like a uh, straight cut in, like so. And the little chip comes out like that. An inch. Of course, I'm holding it upside down, but an inch is an inch. So from 11 to 12 is an inch. So at this point, I'm going to draw a line. And again, with the uh, profile, I'm going to come in like so and create a V, this time more of a V, so a little bit of an angle on both cuts, so like so, boom. And I'm going to cut a little bit out of that corner and just continue kind of bringing that forehead back. Here's what it looks like from the front view. Laying the tool almost flat, just a little bit of curve, a little bit of forward uh, curve. All right, and uh, make one more pass down, move a little bit more material. Looking good, all right. Now, yeah, you will learn more about these principles as you progress in the videos. I won't be just giving measurements in future videos. I'll actually be giving you patterns that you can learn to apply to any size piece. That way you don't need to know the measurement of, of the piece. You can just extract the general proportions through understanding some rules, right? We'll do that in another video. As beginners, we just really want to focus on making a carving that looks good and, uh, and just getting some basic measurements helps us get there. And an angle here, boom, and boom, boom. Okay, a little opening. It started to give it a slightly uh, downward turn at the edges, so it's almost like a little bit of a of a frown. So next, I'm going to take the knife and uh, I'm going to focus on creating planes of three by coming in like so. I like the look of that. Uh, draw a center line on the wood. It's going to help to keep things in proportion. This is saw marks off the top of his head. I'm going to come straight in with a knife at this point, uh, making a stop cut and relieving the uh, bottom of the nose, just like so. All right. So again, I've got the uh, bottom of the nostrils kind of defined, and I'm cutting in towards that triangle and uh, reestablishing that triangle to clean the wood, separating the mouth mound from the nostril flares. The chin is going to narrow as it moves downward, just to set the mouth into the face. That lip is going to follow the dental arch, and so it curves around and tucks in that oral commissure is just sort of just like a little dimple at the corners of the mouth where the lips tuck in. And if you don't have the oral commissure, 
things don't look so good. They don't, it doesn't look good. It looks like you sort of like drew the mouth on the face. It doesn't really like hug the. It doesn't prove prove right. It just looks weird. So. All right. So this is kind of a standard cut you've seen me make in other face videos. If you've seen other face videos, if you haven't, then you're seeing it for the first time. Welcome. Welcome to the new way of uh, to my way of doing uh, these little handheld projects. All right. Not necessarily super important here, but this is called the mid-face groove. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is come on the inside corner and recut that lower leg of the eye, especially in this uh, uh, upper corner here, the inside corner of the eye, like so. And I'm going to take a little chip out, really trying to get depth there. And again, like so. And the same thing over here. All right, so I've come in and I've created the inside corner of the eye with that V cut and just create a little indentation there like so, see that? And the same thing over here, turn the carving upside down. A little indentation here. And I'm going to uh, take the knife again and uh, create a little angled cut like so, see that? Anyway, my uh, good buddy Blake here just got back from Thailand. His wife and him are missionaries to Thailand, and uh, they work and they they created a an orphanage um, well, we along with the help. Created a nonprofit that helps the orphanage. Yeah, yeah, they created. That's what I said. They created a nonprofit <laughs> which helps an orphanage. I like my story better, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, anyway, they're, in other words, they're really great people and uh, been able to uh, work with them before on projects and uh, super cool, super cool folks. So support them if you're watching this and uh, oh, you want to do the plug, Blake, where they can go? Is there a website or? Yeah, um, so I'll send Alec the GoFundMe right now. Um, this orphanage is at risk of losing their home um, by uh, March. And so um, we are, have a GoFundMe currently going. And uh, if you'd be so inclined uh, to help these kids have a home, that'd be amazing. Um, these are 40 kids that have lived here for a long time. Their lives have been transformed for Jesus. And uh, they, they get to live healthy and whole lives. And I wish I could tell you all the stories that go on. There you go. Wow, I didn't expect that. That's great. All right. So I'll put that in the description, like you said. And uh, anyway, so now I'm coming at the side of the nostrils here, and uh, I want to create some nice nostrils, and so I'll draw them in first. And uh, to use the, uh, the, the pencil, I'm going to create a uh, little half circle, like so. <laughs> My life is good. <laughs> remember, Nacho, <laughs> remember Nacho Libre? I wake up every morning at 4 a.m. to make some soup. I sleep in a bed alone all of my life. Life is good, real good. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies. Okay. Going to use my knife to create the upper eyelid. The upper eyelid is going to sit out a little further. And, uh, a little bit further forward than the lower eye. Back to the grooves, back to the lab again. DD, get out of my laboratory. Remember that one too? That was one of my favorite shows. Dude, me too. So again, I'm just creating these little kind of little circles, grooves, right? Just texture. Some big, some small. It's good to vary them. I don't know. We'll make him looking over to, to this side, to his uh, left. I'm going to make a cut right in the eye, like so. And another triangle cut. So straight in. 
so. The initial cuts of the upper and lower lid come in straight in to relieve that chip. Small cuts, don't push hard. If it doesn't, the chip doesn't free, go over all three of your cuts evenly. This is a technique called sugiban. That is a Japanese way of finishing wood so that it is water resistant. But uh, I'm just going to use my hands and this brush to kind of rub in the oil. Yeah, I'm just going to go over the whole thing a few times with the wire brush. It's kind of faint, but you can see a little bit of a texture change from that brush. Just a little bit of a distressed grain. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, this is a fun project for me. I really enjoyed it. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching the entire thing. I do appreciate it. And if you're interested, you just won a free advertisement. I'm going to advertise my school. Check out this list. It's the one you saw earlier. These are all the available projects on the school at this point. And if you're interested, of course, this is something that is a great thing for those of you who are trying to improve their realistic portraits, right? If you're trying to get better at making one of these, then the school is a great resource for you. Otherwise, leave it alone. Don't worry about it, okay? Anyway, thanks again for watching, folks. See you in the next one.